welcome um, Munia Ael and Nadine Nabaki from Costa Bravo, Lebanon. It, congratulations on a beautiful and incredibly important film. Um, welcome back to TIFF, both of you. Thank you. Um, Munia, I'll start with you. Uh, I mean, first, congratulations. Um, I've heard from colleagues uh, that you've been working on this film for quite a long time. Uh, and so this is yeah. quite um, an incredible moment for you, I'm sure. Um, I wonder if you can start by telling us about the inspiration for this film and the genesis of the project, how you got here. Yes, of course. Um, I think um, it's been a long time that I've been really wanting to talk about family and family dynamics and how the structure within a family often mirrors the one of the society that this family is integrated in. And grow, growing up with um, a lovely, but also very eccentric family, I, I had a lot of inspiration uh, because uh, in a country like Lebanon, it often feels like the outside context puts constant pressure on the intimate space. And I felt like often I was surrounded by people in times of crisis and it allows me to see, it allowed me to see the truth that comes out of people during those times. It can come through the form of humor as a tool to save time or it can come, at, it, it, it could come through different shapes and forms. And I think this is when the screenwriter in me was born. But then during 2015, uh, I made a short film, Submarine, uh, which screened at TIFF uh, during the garbage crisis in Lebanon. And uh, another uh, thing that I naturally wanted to talk about is, of course, my relationship to home, to Lebanon, a relationship that's quite toxic. And, and um, it's a love-hate relationship that is, is, is becoming uh, 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 more and more complicated as the years go by. Because when you really love something, you want to protect it. And sometimes you feel like you don't have that control. And I started exploring that during the garbage crisis in Submarine, uh, which was a film that uh, was a film that explored an anticipated future. I imagined the Lebanon in a dystopian future where everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. And Costa Brava was set in the context of Submarine, but was exploring a family that is trying to protect itself from this, this, this reality. Costa Brava was set in a dystopian 2030, but unfortunately reality caught up with us because the reality of Lebanon today is worse than the one I wrote for 2030. So now the film is set in 2020. And it's a film in which I explore both uh, my relationship to home and, and my relationship to family through an incredible family uh, played by amazing actors and Nadine plays the mom. Incredible is is the word. What an ens ensemble cast you brought together for this. It is impossible not to be sucked into the characters. Each one of them performed so well, but also so rich, you know, with individual kind of um, na like narrative. I, please, uh, Nadine, why don't we start with you and tell it, tell me, tell us what drew you to this film and to this role of Soraya. Um, first of all, it, it was uh, a collaboration with uh, Munya. Uh, I didn't know Munya very well uh, when, uh, you know, we had our first uh, enc encounter or meeting about the film, but um, I was very interested in what was going on in her head and I, and I felt that this was a very intimate story mm -hmm. for her um, and, and that it is a story that she knows well and this is very important for me when you know when i'm working with a director that really knows the subject uh, that they are talking about uh, it, it's it's uh, it's reconforting for me it's uh, it it gives me also confidence to you know hop on this train and 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 go on this adventure and for me it's always about uh, also exploring new maybe facets of uh, maybe my own nature or my own personality. In this particular uh, uh, case, it was actually what drew me even more was that it was very similar to what I am living mm -hmm. um, uh, now, you know, in my own life. We, 
we have a life that is very similar to the life of the you know characters in the film a family that is a little bit isolated because they are somehow um uh you know they've created this sort of safety bubble for themselves and for for their family it's okay i think we've lost you oh. hear me yeah sorry yeah. because i i yeah that's okay we can so, uh, edit that together so what, feel free to start again or like, yeah, so, so this is so this is a family that is almost foreseeing you know the collapse uh that 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 is going to happen and they are they sort of create this uh this bubble of 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 safety for themselves and um in you know in the situation we are living it in right now and with the covid situation i think um i've i've felt very close to to especially soraya who is living also the sort of contradiction between um wanting to be part of everything that's happening outside this safety bubble but at the same time uh, she is uh, she wants to be with her family wants to protect her family from the chaos that is happening outside to this this contradiction uh, that I think I'm personally feeling also uh, as a filmmaker who wants to be in this world outside experimenting, wanting to be uh, on the streets uh, and, and, and experimenting life. And at the same time, I, I, I have to be safe for my family and I have to be in a safe place for my family. So. I mean, I, I was I felt close to the to to Soraya in that sense. Mm. So um, yeah, so this drew me a lot to the to the story and to the script, and I wanted to, you know, experiment all that with uh, Munya because I felt that she she knew very well her you know subject and uh, and she seduced me very quickly. <laughs> and what was really great about that first. What was great about that first meeting with Nadine is that it was the first meeting where it was not a final draft. So this conversation uh, that was very rich allowed me to start rewriting while thinking of Nadine more specifically as well. Of course, I had already started doing that, but what happened is that the character slowly became a mix between Suraya, Nadine, and Munya, and, and those three threads started playing with each other and, um, uh, and the adventure started between her and I before everyone knew. So, so this is maybe what I want to ask them next in, is how the rest of the family came together for you. Um, each one of the characters is so critical to everything that's yes. happening. Um, and even, you know, there are so many kind of sub relationships within the family as in real life. Um, but you feel the presence of the others and the influence of the others. It's just such rich character development. Tell me how that all came together for you. Yes. So Saleh and Nadine, of course, I mean, I was writing with, with them in mind and I, uh, uh, but I was also very curious to know how that first conversation would go, but that came much earlier in the process. But for Reem and Tala and the grandmother, they were in my head. I was drawing them, I was imagining them, and I had no clue who I was going to cast. And I was worried because I know it's the type of film that can fall apart if the cast is not strong because it's the story of this family. And so we did a lot of castings and it was particularly hard because of COVID. So a lot of it was online and not physical and it's hard to feel someone when you're not in the same room. So we did a lot of that during the pandemic and then when the lockdown stopped, we started meeting a lot of people. And Reem, what happened is that I saw so many girls, so many girls, and then I, I wasn't finding the Reem I had written, which was so specific in my mind. And then one day my cast, the casting director uh, at the Ginger Beirut shows me a video of a kid. And I really wanted the kid to look like Saleh and the teenager to look like Nadine. And so she shows me this video of this blue eyed girl and I tell her, oh my God, this is her, please bring her. And she says, well, these are twins. There's two of them. <laughs> I said, well, bring both. 
And the twins came and I fell in love with them, <laughs> in love with them. Uh, this is Mayroon, Nadine's daughter. <laughs> that is <isn't> very much. <laughs> I love her. She can absolutely do <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but no, it's fine. Absolutely. Yeah, she she can't, was, be, uh, she can't be away from me for too long. <laughs> <laughs> I fell in love with the twins, both of them, and decided that each of them had characteristics of the character, and I casted both of them and divided the scenes between the twins. Uh, it 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 was something that. It sounded confusing at first, but it was so natural to me uh, progressively. For the teenager, she's a, a, a kind of girl that, uh, I mean, she's a little bit, she's a very internal. And I tend to sometimes be like this uh, as well. So it was, it, it was um, a relationship that developed progressively. I was very seduced by her, but I wanted to see her again and again and again. And then one day I had a conversation where we both really opened up to each other and and I think that was the day I knew it was her. The grandmother is a mother of a friend that has acted for the first time and the, the, the casting process took a lot of time but because we wanted to build a perfect family. That's shocking that the grandmother is a first time actor. <laughs> That's very surprising to me. I mean, the comic relief, her timing is Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's really incredible. Yeah. Um, sorry, can you see that again? She was terrified because uh, the grandmother and the, the twins, they've never acted in their lives. And, uh, but they were, they were anxious about it, but it felt very natural in the end. It, it reads really natural on screen. Um, <laughs> I'll ask, uh, you touched on it some more, but I think because it's so pressing, I wanna come back to it um, around, you know, the presence of the, the, the present political situation and economic situation in Lebanon, you know, and it's adapting the meaning of your film in real time. How is that experience for you? Um, as a filmmaker, as a Lebanese person, uh, and I'll, I'll ask, Nadine, I'll ask the same question of you too, how you think about this film in real time right now. It, it's uncomfortable because uh, uh, of course, as filmmakers, we are observing our, our environment and we are like uh, raising questions about our status quo and, and it's sad to to it's sad to see that the movie, which was supposed to be um, set in a situ in a dystopian future where everything has gone wrong, it's sad to see that reality is worse than 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 that. And I think that um, if people who read the script at first felt like those people might be a little bit too eccentric, too extreme, uh, to create this open air bunker. I think today uh, those people don't feel extreme at all anymore, and and it's more and more understandable to uh, find a space that takes you away from trauma in, in in a way to try to heal from trauma. And of course, the the the, the question between Walid and Suraya, which is, do we go and try to fight for a better future, or do we protect ourselves uh, and see reality? catch up with us. I think it's a question that a lot of Lebanese people ask themselves today. And, uh, and, and the nature of Lebanese history is so circular that it almost feels like it could be a film that happens 20 years ago because there's been waves of people exiting and, and entering in that sense. And so it's uncomfortable to see that the, the country has become this place that I was so scared uh, would happen. Nadine, I'll, I'll ask you the same question. I mean, I know you're joining us from Beirut. Um, and I'm, so, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear you very well. Oh, sure, I, I'll speak up. Uh, I'll ask you the same question about um, what it is for you to be experiencing or to know that this film is being released as Lebanon is experiencing this crisis in real time. Um, 
I know you're joining us from Beirut. Uh, can you speak to yeah. what that experience is like for you? Yeah, it's 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 very um, you know surprising to see how 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 much similarity there is between the film and really what we're living right now is this you know um, and this collapse that we feel that you know we're on the verge of having um, and the fact that this family has decided you know to to create. Uh, uh, its own uh, safe space uh, is is somewhat natural now because I think not only in Lebanon but everywhere in the world we we've, we've we have we have come I think to the conclusion that we have to create this self sustainable sort of way of living and and find alternative ways of of um, of being and just living and. And being in nature and finding other ways to survive uh, and being uh, self-sustainable is somewhat, for me, the solution. Um, and it's amazing to see how this family uh, is functioning in this sort of uh, environment. And I, I don't think it's. It might seem. It, it might have seemed uh, a bit futuristic a few years ago, but now it's. Uh, it's sort of becoming uh, sort of the normal uh, or the natural or the the more clever way of living, which is I don't find them crazy anymore. I don't find this a few years ago, maybe people would have found this this uh, family to be a bit uh, too eccentric or uh, somewhat crazy for doing what they're doing and for being so iso isolated and and creating this uh, self-sustainable way of living and self-sufficient way of, of living. But I think, uh, I think it's the only way, really. Mm -hmm. um, and in that sense, I, I, I completely understand them. And I completely know uh, uh, what they are going through and the contradiction that they are going through. And, uh, and I think it's a very important story to tell. Uh, yeah. I agree. I think... I think also considering what's happened globally over the last almost two years, I think you it is certainly a story about Lebanon, but it can very much speak to, I think, the experiences um, of many other people around the world. I guess with that, I'll ask, you know, as audiences experience the film, what do you hope they will take away um, from it? Let me also start with you. Um, I hope they'll feel uh, things. Uh, I, I hope they'll feel with the experiences of these characters. They'll feel with their love um, for their home, for each other, and that they'll uh, go on an emotional ride with them and hopefully um, connect <laughs> with our story. And it's also, you know, like my way to talk about Lebanon, but also in a way that... Um, I feel very connected to so many countries today because it's really been a couple of years of radical changes and there's something that we're all connected. And that's also what a pandemic makes you aware of, of how much we're connected. Yeah. yeah. Nadine, is there anything that you would like uh, or that you hope for audiences um, experiencing the film? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear anything. <laughs> That's okay. Do you have Do you have hopes for audiences who experience the film uh, as to what they may take away from it? Um, I don't know if I don't know if finding an example in in, in the way they live doesn't mean that this is the only way to live, or it's you know there's never a right or wrong way to live. But I mean, taking a sort of wanting, I mean, taking a sort of an inspiration of what this family has decided to do is not so bad. <laughs> Uh, even mm -hmm. though, of course, in there, in, in there's there there gonna there's gonna be lots of problems. But uh, I think I, I think they they sort of uh, have this wisdom that we might uh, 
that we might learn from uh, in a way. And I hope they like it. You know, I haven't seen uh, the latest, latest, latest uh, uh, version of the film yet. I'm, I'm dying to see it. I'm sure it's, uh, it's amazing. Um, so I, you know, I just hope, I just hope they're gonna enjoy it. Thank you so much to both of you for joining us and for this beautiful yeah. film. Um, and I am excited for our audiences to, to continue to experience it. Thank you so much. Thank you.